Rapatha uh, is, uh, as you just noted, it's a fully human IgG2 monoclonal antibody directed against PCSK9. Uh, it's recently been approved as of Thursday in the United States um, for patients that have heterozygous FH um, and uh, clinically uh, evident atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease um, who need additional LDL reduction on top of maximally tolerated statins and in patients uh, that are uh, adolescents and adults that have homozygous FH as well. I think it, it speaks to the unmet medical need. Uh, you know, I, I used to be a practicing cardiologist before I came to Amgen. Um, you know, statins are wonderful therapies. Um, they've saved uh, millions of lives, um, and they are the first-line treatment for patients that have elevated uh, cholesterol. Um, I think the challenge has always been, particularly you know, when I was practicing, is after patients derived um, the maximal LDL reduction that they could from um, statins, is what would the second line, optimal second line therapy uh, be? And I think uh, when we developed Repatha, we developed it with that in mind. The patients who need you know, additional, intensive, uh, predictable LDL reduction after statins. Statins uh, have you know, decades of data uh, on them. Um, they are first-line therapy, without a doubt, for patients that have uh, elevated cholesterol. Um, and they should be first-line therapy. Um, you know, Repatha was designed to be used after patients derived the maximal benefit they could from statins. So it was never meant to replace, and it shouldn't be replacing statins. Statins are first-line therapy. Um, if patients need additional LDL reduction after statins, and that can be for patients that are statin intolerant, or you know, have, um, that this could be a very valuable, uh, important therapy for them. Statin intolerance is an interesting phenomenon, uh, and there's lots of debate in the literature on it, and lots of definitions, and, and people like to debate whether it exists or not. You know, I think that, the ch and when you look at the clinical data uh, in randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trials, it's been challenging to identify statin intolerance in those studies. That being said, again, as, a pra as someone who used to practice, um, we do see patients that um, need uh, LDL lowering to reduce their cardiovascular risk, and they develop these symptoms, and they attribute them to statins. And as a treating clinician, the challenge has always been, you have a patient that's sitting across from you telling you they won't take a life-saving medication because they have a symptom, and they believe that symptom is real. And we are, as a physician, we're not in a position to say that that doesn't exist. And so when we developed uh, Repatha um, for statin intolerance and for patients that had tried to find a maximally tolerated statin, um, recognizing that in some patients it's no statin at all, um, we used a clinical kind of real-world pragmatic definition um, and that relied on a patient having failed at least two statins, um, one at the lowest dose, um, and we were able to demonstrate that that patient population is indeed very high risk. In our clinical trials, their, uh, their mean or average LDL was about 190 milligrams per deciliter. That is very similar to the um, baseline LDL in the 4S trial, um, which was kind of the, the pivotal um, outcomes trial uh, with uh, simvastatin, um, you know, back in, uh, you know, the, the 80s and 90s. So um, clearly an unmet me medical need in those patient populations. We think that Repatha um, could offer, um, again, intensive predictable LDL reduction in that patient population.